Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over the prisoner's dilemma and the strict dominance solution concept. Here's the situation. Two suspected criminals are arrested. The police think that they were trying to rob a store, but the cops have only enough evidence to prove that they were trespassing. Thus, the police need one of the criminals to rat out the other to charge them for the bigger crime. How can they do this? Well, maybe if they offer them a deal. So the police are going to privately sequester each of the prisoners and tell them about this offer. If no one confesses to the robbery, the police can only charge the prisoners for trespassing. The punishment there is one year in jail each. If one confesses and the other one doesn't, the police will be lenient on the rat and severely punish the quiet one, or ten years in jail for the quiet one, and zero years for the rat. The rat gets to walk away. If both confess, then their testimony isn't as valuable, and the police can punish both of them equally by giving them five years in jail each. We can condense all this information into the matrix on your screen. By convention, the rows always reflect player 1's moves, and the columns always reflect player 2's moves. Meanwhile, the first number in each cell corresponds with player 1's payoff, while the second is for player 2. The last important game theory convention I'll tell you about for now is that player 1 is always a man and player 2 is always a woman. This is so we can use pronouns like he, she, his, and hers without any confusion. The solution here is very simple. We will see that both players are better off defecting regardless of what the other player does. Let's start by looking at player 1's options. Assume he knew player 2 would cooperate. Well, player 1's best response in this case is to defect. Cooperating will get him one year in jail, while defecting allows him to walk away. Now assume player 2 will defect. Again, we see the same thing. Player 1 is better off defecting as well. If he cooperates, he will spend 10 years in jail. If he defects, he'll only spend 5. Since 5 years is better than 10 years, he should defect in this case. Consequently, it is very obvious that player 1 will defect in this game. No matter what player 2 does, player 1 is strictly better off by defecting. In game theory, we say that the defect strategy strictly dominates the cooperate strategy, and rational players, by rule, never play a strictly dominated strategy. Now let's look at a player 2's options. Imagine player 1 cooperated. As we saw with player 1 last time, player 2's best response is to defect here, as no time in jail is better for her than 1 year is. And if player 1 defected, player 2's best response is to defect as well, since 5 years in jail is better than 10 years. So the defect strategy strictly dominates cooperate for her as well, meaning player 2 will defect in this game. Thus we have an equilibrium. Defect, defect. This outcome perplexes the most common observer. Indeed each, of the indeed, each of the prisoners would be better off with the outcome if they had both cooperated, as they would only spend a year in jail apiece. But because there is temptation to screw over the other prisoner by defecting on him, the defect-defect equilibrium is the only stable outcome. We will build on this concept in future videos.